We move to a world that central banks are not there to protect us. And central banks is the only thing we had to look in financial markets for the last 10 years. As central banks pull out, as inflation recovers a bit, and things start to normalize, you need to rely more on active management and fundamentals. What we do with clients is frame them in a risk return characteristics. And one of the key ways in which you can get excess returns with the same volatility is using the liquidity premium. So again, every client, when we discuss their strategic allocation, we look at the volatility they are willing to tolerate, and we show them the potential drawdown of the risk profile. And if they are too sensible to that, then you can lower that through the liquidity premium investing in alternative investing. I think there are opportunities in both liquid and illiquid markets. Uh, in, in some of these places of new frontier markets, we, it's difficult to get access through them in a liquid form. So probably through private equity strategies that we favor in our asset allocation, it would be the way to get exposure to that growth initiatives. But again, taking into account the geopolitical risk that some of these countries already face and will continue to face in the months ahead of us. You can tactically use volatility as another asset class. Don't be afraid of that volatility. Buy it when it's cheap and sell it when it's expensive. Another alternative is buy assets uncorrelated and can protect you. If we think things would escalate in a geopolitical side significantly, gold will be an asset class that we will consider. We used in the past calls volatility on gold as an alternative. Another one for dollar investors is that as real yields start to be attractive in the short part of the curve, because that part of the curve, the two to five years, can give you good real returns, as I said, for the first time in 10 years for a dollar investor.